Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are back again with yet another prep series, this time for Flipkart Runway Season 4. This opportunity is for girls who are expected to graduate in 2026 and the round 1 is on 17th March 2024. We have already uploaded the pattern on our official YouTube channel that is Vice Coder, so do check it out before watching this video. Since we know that the round 1 is an online quiz with 20 questions to be answered in 30 minutes, I will be taking 20 such MCQs in this video and explaining them. You can also practice these problems on our tool by clicking the link in the description and you can also take the mock test after this. Moving on to the problems, the very first problem is saying what is the output of the following C code. Given b equals to 7, we need to predict the output of a. So we are given b as 7 and the statement is a equals to b post increment plus pre increment b plus b post increment again. Let's divide this problem into three sub parts b plus 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 b and b plus plus again. Since this is a post increment, the statement will give 7 as the output first and then it will increase b to 8. Since this is a pre increment, b will be incremented to 9 first, then the statement will give us 9 as the output. Since this is a post increment again, the statement will give 9 as the output and then we will be incremented to 10. So the output of A will be 7 plus 9 plus 9 so that will give me 25 as my output. So the answer for first question is 25. Moving on to the next question. Predict the output. So if we look closely we have not defined the number of columns in this 2D array. So this will throw a compiler error while declaring the 2D array. So the correct output is this. Moving to the next question. Which of the following statements is false about arrays in Java? Looking at the very first option, a Java array is always an object. That's true. Length of the array can be changed after creation of the array. Since we know that arrays are static in nature and their size cannot be changed, so this statement is false. Moving on to the next option, arrays in Java are always allocated on heap. So the false statement about arrays in Java is Option number B. Moving on to the next problem. How many distinct binary search trees can be constructed with three distinct keys? So to solve this problem, we actually need to know the concept of cattle and numbers. So the formula for cattle and numbers is 2n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial multiplied by n factorial, where n is the number of distinct keys. So in this case, n is 3. So this will give me 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial multiplied by 3 factorial. This is equals to 6 into 5 into 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial multiplied by 3 factorial is 3 into 2 into 1 that will give me 6. So 6 and 4 factorial, 6 and 4 factorial got cancelled. So our output will be 5. So our output is 5. Moving on, the difference between the external path length and the internal path length of a binary tree with n internal nodes is, so we'll quickly create a binary node, binary tree. Let's suppose A is the root node with its two children B and C. The two child of B are D and E, that of C are F and G. So the internal nodes in this binary tree are A, B, C that is 3 and the path length which is the internal path length for each one of them is 0, 1 and 1. So the internal path length is 2. The external nodes are D, E, F, G and the path length for them respectively are 2, 2, 2 and 2. So that is 8. So the external path length minus the internal path length would give me 8 minus 2 which is 6. That is nothing but 2 into 3 and what is 3? The number of internal nodes. So that is 2n. The output for this question is 2n. Coming up to the next question. In the worst case scenario, the number of comparisons needed to search a singly linked list of length n for a given element is. So the worst case is when the element is present at the last index of the linked list. So for that case, we will require n comparisons. So the output for this question is n. Moving on. What is the time complexity of NQ operation? 
so whenever we are adding any element in our queue the time complexity for that operation is order of 1 moving forward the complexity of search operation in stack data structure is since we know that stack is a linear data structure the search operation will require order of n time complexity moving forward in a competition four different functions are observed all the functions use a single for loop and within the for loop same set of statements are executed consider the following for loops given all of these for loops if n is the size of the input which is positive which function is most efficient if the task to be performed is not an issue so for that we need to calculate the time complexity of each for loop coming up to the very first for loop this is the very basic for loop so we can calculate the time complexity which will come out to be order of n in the second for loop i is incrementing linearly if even if it is incrementing by 2 it is linear so the time complexity for this will be order of n now here our i is multiplying itself by 2 every time so for this case the time complexity would be order of log n base 2 coming up to the last for loop for i equals to n i less than n i divide equals to 2 this is an infinite for loop and this for loop will never end so the most efficient function is the third for loop with time complexity of order of log n base 2 coming up with the next question what is the worst case time complexity of insertion sort where position of the data to be inserted is calculated using finding the search so even if we reduce to calculate the position of data to be inserted from order of n to order of log n the time complexity worst in worst case for insertion sort will remain order of n square so the answer is n square moving on to the next question the link between two processes p and q to send and receive messages is called this is a computer network based question so the output or the answer for this question is communication link an inter process communication facility provides at least two operations so when two processes are communicating between each other there are two operations which are send a message and receive a message so the out, so the correct answer for this question is send message and receive message now which of these methods sets every element of a list to a specified object so if you look up the definition for each of these methods you will find that the answer for this question is the fill method this is a theoretical question you can revise your java theory to answer this question moving on to the next question which of these methods deletes all the elements from invoking collection so the method of clear will do that so clear method will delete all the elements from invoking collection when does exceptions in java arises in code sequence so the exceptions in java arise in code sequence only at the runtime it is not at the compilation time it cannot occur at any time but at the runtime moving on compile time polymorphism is also known as this is a theoretical question so the answer is method overloading now coming up to the next question what is the output of the program so i'll quickly explain what the program is we are creating a public class person and we are creating a function talk and it is printing i am a person now we are creating another class student which is inherited from the class person now we are creating the same function again which is talk and it is printing i am a student in this class now in the main function we are creating an object p of class student and we are using the function talk since the object is of the class student and the method that we are using is already overridden the concept is method overriding so this will print i am a student so this is the concept of method method overriding in java coming up to the next question in a sql inner join how are records selected so option a is only unmatched records option b records with matching values in both tables option c only records with null values or option d records with distinct values in both table so if we look at inner join inner join records matching values in both the tables so the correct answer is option b all right moving forward to the next question what does the lexql left join return only unmatched record from the left table only unmatched record from the right table all the records from the left table and matching records from the right table all records from both the table so the sql left join will will have all the records from the left table and matching records from both the tables 
Okay, so if this was a SQL right join, it will include all the records from the right table and the matching records from both the tables or the left table. So the correct answer is option number C. Moving on to our last question. What is the purpose of the SQL cross join? So the SQL cross join returns the Cartesian product of the two tables. So that is option number A. We don't even need to look at the rest of the options. The correct option is our option number A. So I hope you have understood all the questions and if you still have any doubts, you can ask them in the comment section. Don't forget to practice these problems on our tool and take the mock test to prepare well for your quiz. Wishing you all the best to all the candidates. Thank you and have a nice day.